The international music markets are becoming more and more important in your music career strategy. In our continuing series examining the hard rock metal landscape today, we sit down and speak with Carol Hoffman, founder of Hilltop Live, a booking agency based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Hoffman, who is also the founder of the annual music festival, Opicopy, discusses the state of the South African music market today and what opportunities exist for artists who are looking to perform in South Africa and much, much more. Coming up. This episode of the Mubu TV Insider Video Series is brought to you by the Music Business Registry. The Music Business Registry is the leading music industry publisher of the most up-to-date contact information for major and independent record label A&R, music publishers, artist managers, music attorneys, music supervisors, and much, much more. The Music Business Registry is the trusted industry standard and source serving the music business community for over 30 years with the most accurate and up-to-date contact information available. Their titles include the a r Registry, the Film and Television Music Guide, the Music Publisher Registry, and the Music Attorney Registry. All of their publications are available in PDF, CSV, or online subscription. Visit musicregistry.com and use coupon code MUBUTV10 at checkout. That's musicregistry.com, coupon code MUBUTV10. When you're ready to put your music to work, musicregistry.com. Hi, and we're back. Coming to you live from the second annual Global Rock Summit here at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood, California. And uh, we managed to catch up with Carl Hoffman, who is the founder of Hilltop Live, South Africa's biggest live music network of annually repeatable events. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice, Eric. Thank you, man. Um, I wanted to ask you, so how's the summit been? You just spoke on one of the panels. How did that go for you? Yeah, great. Uh, You know, these things... It's a long way from home, so when we're in town, it's fantastic to have these opportunities. You know, it's lots of people together, nice nice crucible of different relationships, you know, so it, it often works for us. That's great. Um, Carl, my first question was, can you tell us the history of uh, Hilltop Live? I, and, I, and I believe it began with just one festival, is that correct? Yes, it's... Um, uh, 21, 22 years ago, and, um, I was an engineer on the mine, and next to it were our local watering hole... Uh, was a, a bar with Sage Roof affair in the middle of nothing. Um, and we started drinking beers one night and said, why don't we invite a band? And invited two bands actually the first time around and we had about 300 people inside a small Sage Roof, like a hunting lodge affair. And then the year thereafter wanted, uh, you know, said, okay, why don't we start a festival? Um, and lots of hard work and sweat and blood and tears. And uh, we had about 1,500 people there and the Harley Davidson guys. And it was chaos. Yeah, no, it was it's fucking fantastic, <laughs> but it, it was chaos. Um, and then, uh, so that's how Opikopi got founded. And that was our first festival, you know, and that's grown into, um, in South Africa, it's like a baby Glastonbury, you know. Um, so it's, for what we do with that, it's the biggest thing in, in Africa, actually, I think. Um, but from there, we've grown to add more festivals, you know, so we we own quite a few f- different festivals, you know, not just alternative rock, but, to, you know, we, we do Opikopi, Ramfest, Campus Tours, lots of things like that, but also what you go, what the rest of the world would call world music festivals. We do a lot of that um, yeah, and we work, you know, young, old Everything, uh, in everything in between. <laughs> um, so we sit with a few few of the festival properties that we we own ourselves or own um, chunks of, but we also produce for other people. We've got a production company and quite a large uh, in South Africa. Uh, ticketing revenue doesn't really cover the cost, so you need a big sponsorship division. And in the music business, we probably have the biggest division of its kind in in Southern Africa. Working with between 50 and 100 brands, you know. So we've got a nice network of live music platform, a live music platform that we've built up over 21 years. And we also now diversified into technology. We run our own ticketing companies, cashless events, you know. So there's a whole community management toolkit technology thing that we're busy with. So it's, you know, you work at it for 21 years and yeah, then it's, you get it's, it down, uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, speaking of uh, over the last 20 years, what you know, has been the most significant developments in South Africa's music scene, do you think? That's a difficult question. You know, um, look, the thing is, we're part of the entire world. Um, In other words, 
I think the internet democratized music, you know, so there's a lot more power in in low level hands, you know, so you can do a lot more if you are, certainly you still need money and you still need access and there's, there is that, but you can achieve things. So and that's democratized things for our festivals, you know, the way we choose bands, the way we, we put that in into play. Um, also, you know, if I look at what the, the, the scene is moving from, where, the inter the the recording industry drop had didn't hit South Africa as hard until say two three years ago. So we, uh, I would say five to ten years behind what happened in Europe and and internationally. But that certainly struck now. In other words, a lot of the movement is also going into live music and the, the live scene as we have it now in South Africa, many of the festivals didn't exist 20 years ago, you know, wow. also under the previous government, many, they were festivals long ago. Many of them were just squashed. So we were the first sort of batch of new festivals that came onto just as the government turned in 1994, 95. And at that point, there was almost nothing. Whereas, you know, even in our own stable at the moment, almost from January to, to December, there's something happening, you know, and we deliberately, that was our approach. That's what we wanted is activity throughout the year. And also, you know, there's the stadium artists that come in and there's one, a big international act once a month. But what, what we, in my opinion, what's vitally important for, to artists is the second tier and almost a third tier below that, you know, big festivals and, you know, garden concerts in botanical gardens. We do, we are probably going to do 30 or 50 of those next year, you know, so, and that piece is almost vital if you, it, it's the most vital if you're an artist climbing your way up, you know, that's the latter right. pieces. And that's always what's, what's, of, what was of interest to me, you know, we, I don't consider myself a promoter. We, we builder of, Builders of bridges, you know. Right. So that's great. So it looks a lot different. Sorry, it's a very long answer to your question, but it's there's more infrastructure and certainly there's more fiber to it, in my opinion. You know. Right. So yeah, um, there are quite a number of music festivals and live events in South Africa today. Obviously, ones that you guys are all doing. Are, are they focused musically around artists from South Africa or from the international market? Do you think? It used to be. South Africa is a strange anomaly. You know, we're on the, at the southern tip of Africa, right. uh, but also we're the engine room for a large swath of the southern part of Africa, you know. So um, so South Africa has got a, a strong influence musically into into Africa. Um, we used to be very self-reliant and many of, you know, say a festival like Kopi Kopi was built and on the, the bricks and mortar of that festival was South African talent, you know. We didn't book any international artists probably into our eighth, ninth year, you know. Um, and, um, okay, that's changing. We're part of the international scene now. It's grown. But what is nice is that we, it is still, it's a long way to get to South Africa, you know, and even a, a festival like, say, Opi Kopi is 85% local artists, you know. So oh. that's quite nice. Um, yeah. We do lots of other festivals, you know, family festivals, which is 100% South African jazz, world music, which is, you know, some of the township shows we do, 20,000, 30,000 people, and there's not an international act in sight, you know. So so it's nice from that perspective, you know, and the, the African, the dynamics are changing. There's lots of international music coming in, and R&B is big, hip-hop is starting to become big, but still Afropop, African music, that's, you know, it's relevant. We can sell tickets with it, it's, and it moves into Africa, you know. Somebody like, we work with house DJs, like, say, Black Coffee. We do a campus mm -hmm. tour with him. Um, and I mean, that guy plays the, all over Africa, but the world, you know, so it's, it is like a South African diaspora. Yeah. It's a nice, it's a, for me, South Africa is a nice anomaly to what's happening in the rest of the world. Right, you know, it's right. got its own set of which influence, is cool, yeah. which is fantastic, you know, yeah. so there's some really nice things coming out, interesting artists, you know, That's so funny. it's a nice place to be. Yeah. Um, is South Africa a strong market for various styles of music or do some styles do better than others? South Africa's complex, you know, so it's not a, we've got about 55 million people, give or take, and lots of other, you know, 55 South African million citizens and then lots of people from all over Africa oh, in our country. Um, but it's not homogenous. That's what many people don't realize. You know, it's not, if you go to Germany or the UK, then it's 40 million Germans, essentially, right. you know, and some 10% Turkish or whatever. South Africa has got five or six million 
um, Zulus and four million causas and five, you know so it's it's a complicated country from that perspective. So an answer to your question is um, there's a market certainly for Western pop rock uh, alternative acts. You know they sell they can sell a stadium. You know somebody like One Direction or Foo Fighters or that comes and goes. It'll sell tickets. Mumford and Sons, which we're bringing out now, will probably do 50 to 60 to 70,000 tickets. So that exists, that layer, but also um, you get things like, say, John Legend, which comes in and sells out seven, eight shows in a row, you know, which is more R&B, right. I don't know, soul, jazzy. That. Um, so it's, it's, a, um, it's a more complex market, but it's also a developing market. And, you know, often what I tell people is South Africa is where the first world meet, meets the third world, you know. So there's, right. there's money and there's sophistication, but you also, you know, one hour from Johannesburg, you can be in a rural village and have that African experience. So it's interesting, you know, and, and some of the, the, the biggest selling music inside the country itself is Afrikaans middle of the road right. CDs, you know, which is a completely different market again. So, so it's complex. It's a, you know, they, what, what, I, what's fascinating to me is, you know, just before I went onto the panel, actually yesterday I asked my office just to send me a list of who's, which international acts traveled South Africa in the last year or two, you know, from ourselves, from our competitors in South Africa. And it's, and it's actually astonishing how many artists, you know, I didn't even realize how many artists we brought out. And, you know, it's, so 20 years ago, there was nothing. And then we started reaching out and build, building these blocks. And actually now it looks to me like it's, it's a semi-normalized market, you know. So it's firmly, if we go to the agencies like, say, William Morris or CAA or any of those guys, there's, it's an a semi-established market, you know. It's it's a, between Europe and Australia. There's a legitimate stop in South Africa where right. it's not just symbolic. You can make some money and you can move on. If you're a big artist, if you're a small artist just wanting to work the circuit, there's a few gigs there now. You know, you can we can get that going. So it's 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 nice, you know. For me personally, that's a large chunk of what we set out to do when we got going with this thing. Is, that's the fiber we wanted to build and you know it took us 20 years but it, it's yeah, it, there. it's there now yeah yeah it's great what what advice would you have for bands and artists that want to come to south africa to perform and try to break into that market yeah it's look the thing is south africa is not your I think the alluring thing about South Africa is that it's not your typical entry points you know so it's usually when when people want to break their careers, they aim for the USA or the UK or Germany or, you know, one of those. But what's, what, what I think is fascinating about smaller countries like South Africa or, you know, Poland or Hungary or, although those are European countries, but you can get access and you can get in and get traction in a different way and you can get visibility and a little bit of movement and from there launch your career, you know, so, um, and that's not always apparent to somebody that's sitting in Los Angeles, you know. Right. So, yeah, it feels like, you, to me, it feels like these kids here f are fighting against a million other bands, you know. Right. And, and they sometimes, okay, maybe it's you fighting a thousand other bands. But um, so what we look at if we, we certainly we need some of the headliners, you know, we, we need strong artists in our festivals to sell tickets, but also we very, we very open to look for artists that are very active, on on their own communities, you know, that that create great content, that tells a story, that's social media very active, you know. So we booked things like say Inter Shikari into the festival with without any radio play in our country. You know, we stuck it in a festival, gave them a great slot and slot and they knocked it out of the park, you know. Right. Um and, you know, somebody like the Congos, we actually we broke it in South Africa and that little bit of momentum they brought back into the US and you can see where they are now. Wow. Somebody like say Monk Michael Bublé, many people don't know this. He broke in South Africa, you know. He saw really? wow. He was the first country that they, because it's almost, you know, we we working on other projects now where we we working on festival concepts that we we break them and we design them in South Africa because the the rand is the rand to the dollar is twelve thirty, you know, it's a soft yeah. currency, yeah. So it doesn't cost you a fortune, and you you very far away from strong currency markets, so you can afford to take a little bit of uh, a chance right. by, and setting the knobs and getting the project re ready and then taking it over the world. Um, so it's a little bit, it's a, it's a soft entry point, you know, and mm. many people don't realize it, you know, right. or, or for me, if you're competing in LA, 
fuck me, you know, I look at this and, you know, you want to lie on your arms and cry just with how difficult it is to get in here, you know. Yeah. And that just feels me like, shit, there's a, it's, it's a little wormhole that you can get in and right. if you knock it, then you, it's, you know, it's a big fest, it, it looks fantastic. It, it's probably going to be much more difficult to get on a stage like that. In our, to get onto Coachella as a life's of work, of course, you know? yeah, virtually um, impossible. Yeah. yeah, so so there's uh, a lot of opportunity for that chance. If the thing is, we have to be, you know, if you look at it from our perspective, uh, certainly we need the headliners, but it's nice to have other artists, nice to have interesting. Fuck, if somebody comes to us, uh, you know, there's a. I was telling the story inside, you know, I was I was in Israel at a at a music festival expo thing and we saw lots of great bands but there was this one sort of jazzy rock outfit and just fucking gobsmackingly good you know and just on that we stuck them in the festival and by all account everybody that saw it says it was the best thing they saw at the festival you know so they're back in now this year they'll play a biggest a big stage you know that's and, and often that's just that's just the the that's nudge amazing. you need you know so in my opinion festivals are it's a little bit like the A&R department of the public. Yeah. You know, it's, we do the research, we put up great acts. Right. Oh, well, that's what a festival, according to me, should do. They're not, not every, they're not all like that, but yeah. if it comes together like that, that's, you know, that's what we're about. So what did you think? Some really valuable insights on the international perspective from Carol, one of the leading concert promoters in South Africa. So insiders, here's the question of the day. What did you find were the most educational aspects of our conversation with Carol? Was it the significant developments in South Africa's music scene? Or was it the specific types of music that do better than others? Or was it the advice for artists and bands that want to come to South Africa to perform? Or maybe it was something else that struck a chord with you? We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please make sure to subscribe to Mubu TV for more information on how to educate, empower, and engage your music career. You can also check out a summary of this episode and everything we talked about in the description below as well. And if you enjoyed this video, we'd really love it if you hit the like button and let us know what other kinds of videos and types of content you would want to see on our channel. Hit us up in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.